In our next lesson on glucose metabolism from chapter 13, we want to look at the regulation of glycolysis. Regulation of the pathway occurs at step 3, the step catalyzed by phosphofructokinase. Remember, there are three possible flux control points. This is the actual flux control point, or the rate determining step, where we control flow through the pathway. In a later video, we'll see why this particular step. For now, let's just look at the regulation of this pathway and of this enzyme in particular we find that it's regulated differently in bacteria and in mammals. Pictured on the left is the regulation pathway in bacteria. On the right is the regulation in mammals. Let's look at these in turn. First, let's look at the regulation of PFK or phosphofructokinase in bacteria. We looked at this in Chapter 7 as an example of allosteric regulation. There are both positive and negative allosteric effectors. ADP is an activator. Here we has our, have our traffic signal colors. As ADP concentration increases, it binds to PFK and elevates its activity. ADP, ADP is a, a measure of the energy need of the cell. In other words, if ADP concentration is high, then ATP concentration must be low and we need more energy. This is the main benefit of the glycolytic pathway. We produce more ATP. So it makes sense that ADP would be an activator. And you can imagine that ATP is probably an inhibitor. We also find that phosphoenolpyruvate, one of the downstream products of the pathway, the product directly in step 9, is an inhibitor. Remember, this is an example of feedback inhibition. As the concentration of PEP increases, it means we're producing too much product, more than we can use, and so we need to shut down the pathway. And so as PEP concentration builds, it binds to PFK and inhibits its activity. In mammals, the regulation is a little different. The, the main regulator is fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. It is an activator of the pathway. At the top of the screen here, we have the reaction that produces fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. We start with fructose 6-phosphate, we transfer a phosphoryl group from ATP, and here's our 2,6 product. That reaction is catalyzed by phosphofructokinase 2, or PFK2. So note here the distinction. PFK1 makes fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, and PFK2 makes 2,6-bisphosphate. And that's the easiest way to remember the distinction between them. Here's how this regulation works. As blood glucose increases, the hormone insulin is produced in response to that, and that signals the cells on multiple tissues and organs that there is blood glucose present and that that glucose needs to be taken inside the cell and processed. Of course, the main way to process glucose is going to be the glycolytic pathway. Insulin also stimulates PFK2 and that elevates the concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. As that concentration increases, it binds to PFK1 and elevates its activity, so in the end we get more glucose processed through glycolysis. So again, as blood glucose increases, insulin is produced, PFK2 is activated, 2,6-bisphosphate is produced, and that activates PFK1. So we run more glycolysis, we process more glucose. So you can see why this system would work in a higher organism like a mammal where you have multiple organs, you produce hormones, and different uh, tissue types and organs respond to those hormones. In a single cell animal like bacteria, they don't produce hormones, they don't respond in the same way. So you can see why the regulation would be different in bacteria and mammals. In the next video lesson, we'll see why step 3 is the main flux control point, and we'll look at some of the possible fates of pyruvate. How can that be used by the cell?